we move to Friday, where we have what was expected to be a pretty big matchup in the ACC. Um, now, maybe not so much. The Virginia Tech Hokies, they head to Coral Gables. They're going to take on the Miami Hurricanes at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. Miami, a 19.5-point favorite at home. The Virginia Tech money line, if you're feeling froggy, plus 700. Uh, total is 55 on this, so we've got an implied score around 37 to 18 on this. Parker, Virginia Tech has been far from the team that we thought they could be over the summer. Uh, drones hasn't looked nearly as dynamic. Uh, I mean, this team went down 23 to 7 to Rutgers. They were down 17 to nothing to Vanderbilt. Uh, Miami's a bit of a different beast, right? What, what do you got on this one? Yeah, it, it, it's hard to get excited about Virginia Tech in this spot just because they've been so slow to start in every single one of their games. It looks like the first half, they're really having some problems, um, you know, generating offense and then maybe giving up some explosives. You look at, you know, Kyron Drones uh, this season, I feel like he's just too buttoned up. They they kind of overcorrected for what they wanted to do uh, last season. Those first two games, average depth of target of 6.7, 5.8. And I get that. We said, hey, Kyron Drones, you need to make that pass, right? You need to say, hey, I can get six through the air. I don't need to try to get six through my legs, really open up the offense with that run pass balance. It looks like they overcorrected in the Vanderbilt and Marshall games doing that and just haven't really been able to figure out what exactly works super well for them across a whole four quarters for drones. His average depth of target way higher in these last two games, 11.2, 12.3 completion percentage going up, or at least in an adjusted sense, although we had five drops against Rutgers, which uh, I think I'm coming to believe that drops are, you know, endogenous to uh, the defense as well in terms of pressure. And, you know, if the quarterback gets it out fast, that, that might be charted a drop and it bounces off a guy's hand. So do with that what you will. But um, yeah, it just feels like they're, they're, they're uh, if you could imagine Gary and Kyle, like dialing in a radio frequency, feels like they have a very sensitive dial on drones and they just keep, they're just kind of back and forth and they can't get it exactly where they want it there um, overall. So yeah, Miami super ruthless. I think with the slow starts for Virginia Tech, Miami is, uh, you know, first in EPA uh, per play on offense. Very, very efficient. 11th in the rush, first in the drop back. I think Cam Ward's going to put a lot of pressure on them. And this Virginia Tech team's it's not really built to overcome a negative game state. Uh, I think the big question is, will Virginia Tech let this get so big uh, that they can't even mount a comeback here? I have this Miami by almost 25 points. Very, very one-sided. Uh, very worried about the slow starts for the Hokies here. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. That's a great analogy, by the way, uh, with the with the dial, this very sensitive dial. That's a that's a good one. Uh, Virginia Tech, two and four against the spread their last six against Miami. Uh, the Hurricanes have won the last three straight up, and they covered two of them. But they did not cover last year. Uh, Virginia Tech three and one against the spread since 2022 as a double-digit road dog in Miami. Uh, focusing on this year, they're two and one against the spread as a double-digit favorite already this year. Kyle, Virginia Tech's offense number 105 in havoc rate allowed. They're number 71 in run blocking grade at PFF. That's tied with Wyoming. Uh, I don't think that's good when you're going against Miami. What, what do you expect to see here? Tied with Wyoming this year, Gary. You know, that's a really bad thing. Um, a couple people ask about the weather for this game. So um, it being Friday night definitely makes a big difference from if it was Thursday night. Thursday night in Miami, the weather is uh, 30 miles per hour wind, gust to 45 miles per hour. But this one is actually Friday night. And, um, and it, you know, it looks like in the range of uh, 16 miles per hour wind, gust to 20, 22. So nothing drastic. I think uh, we'll have to watch the weather as we go throughout the week, but my guess is this one won't be quite as impacted by the weather as much as some people would think. Um, so getting into the game, I love the weather report thing. That's fantastic. <laughs> so um, the Miami's been as advertised, guys. Like you couldn't knock them in any way for what they've done so far this year. Third in the nation in yards per play margin. Cam Ward has been fantastic. 92.2 PFF rating. I think I'm most impressed by a 77.6 PFF rating under pressure. Uh, only two turnover-worthy plays so far this year. He's making some great decisions. He has 10 big-time throws on 23 attempts of 20 yards or more. So great deep ball. Um, West Virginia, like you guys have said, disappoint or West Virginia, Virginia Tech has disappointed so far this year. Uh, two and two. Even in their wins, they really haven't been that impressive. Um, they're only 80th in the nation in yards per play margin. So uh, that's despite not playing a, what top. They're, they're like 43rd in strength of schedule. So yep. uh, I think that Virginia Tech is definitely disappointed. I don't remember what this game of the year line was, but I'm sure it wasn't even close to anything like this. So, you know, we've seen the adjustment made. I still like drones overall. He's just been turnover prone this year. And like Parker said, I think that is a good analogy about they're trying to find that right spot for 
for drones they haven't found it yet they're just 97th in success rate on offense so very reliant on big plays so they're going to hit big plays throughout this one they better or i don't think they can keep up also remember when i said army has only allowed six tackles for a loss so far this year in four games virginia tech has allowed 29 tackles for a loss ouch they're getting behind the sticks consistently uh, miami's defense hasn't been talked about as much uh, as the offense but they've been really good ninth and success rate allowed i want to bet miami if anything here but this number is a little too big for me yeah I, I really thought the number had gotten too big for me too but looking at the schedule spot looking at the miami team diving a little further into these numbers i, I do have a play uh you know you mentioned 43rd for the strength of schedule espn's got virginia tech schedule at number 73 and miami's at number 88 uh and virginia tech has just looked awful against both of the power five teams that they played and that's Rutgers and Vanderbilt. I mean, neither of those teams is capable of what this Miami team is capable of. In the sense that I'm getting from watching Miami week after week, uh, they are out for blood basically every week. Miami is number seven in defensive line yards allowed, number nine in stuff rate. And Virginia Tech's offense, they're number 59 in stuff rate allowed. On the other side, Miami is number two in passing success and number 13 in passing explosiveness. And Virginia Tech's defense is number 68 in both. I think this thing could get lopsided. I've got Miami by 27. Parker, you said by 25. I feel like yes, anything sir. under three touchdowns is is good to me. So I, I'm going to lock it in. I'm going to lay the 19 and a half with Miami. Uh, I laid it at 19. It's moved up a little bit. I, I would expect this thing to get to 21 by the time we get to Friday night. Uh, so but anything under 21, I feel, I feel pretty good about because I think Miami is just going to take them behind the woodshed on this one. 